All right, so for this example, uh, we're going to be looking a little bit more at these rate limit requests that have status code 429. And um, in particular, I'm going to be working on this application here, which tells us about different fruits. Um, so this web application is basically sharing um, a big list with the internet. And you can see on the fruit page, I can pass in an index. So index 0 is apple, um, index 1 is banana. If I go back to 0, I get apple again. There's a bunch of other fruits. Um, if I go to a very large number past the end of the list, uh, no error, I just get an empty string back. Okay, so let's um, let's head over here and actually write something that will uh, pull all the data off of this page. And so maybe I should grab this URL. Okay, so I'm going to write a web scraper that tries to grab all the fruits. And um, initially, uh, the web application is not going to send any requests to slow things down, and the web scraper is just going to go as fast as it can. Um, later, we're going to have the web application actually send kind of um, these back off messages. And then uh, the last piece will be actually making the web scraper respect it. So, so I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say import uh, requests. And uh, so this is the request module. And I'm going to ultimately make a function called nice uh, get. So this is going to do an HTTP get request. And, uh, but it's going to slow things down. Uh, if we get a response that, hey, we should wait a while, right? So I'm going to get a URL here, uh, and uh, I'm going to say requests.get that URL. That will be a response object. And I'm going to do my raise for a status. And then finally, I'm going to return the text of that. So I'm going to say r.text. Uh, and, um, and then what I'm going to ultimately want to do here um, is at this point, I don't want to just raise a generic response for it, but I want to uh, check if we should back off. Okay, so that means I saw a 429 request response. Okay, so for right now, this is just a generic, um, hey, I'm doing a get and, and raising it if there's any sort of error message. So I have that, and, um, and let's try it. So I'm going to say nice get, I'm going to pass in that URL. I get the empty string back. If I go to um, index one, uh, I get banana, right? So it's able to fetch that. So what I want to do is um, write a function that's called uh, grab fruits. And, uh, and here's what we'll do. We'll say, uh, we'll create a list. So fruits equals empty list and and the problem is, is I don't really know how long the, the list is, right? So I can't say something like this because I have no idea what to put here. I don't know how many different items there are. So I'm going to go back to this style of loop where I say uh, i equals 0, and then I'm just going to keep doing this while it's true. So I'll say i plus equals 1, and then here I can actually grab the different fruits. So, so here's what I'll do. I'll say um, fruit equals nice get... Um, I guess I have this base URL, don't I? Maybe, um, maybe what I should do is uh, make another function that will be uh, fruit URL, and they'll have some sort of index. And for this one, what am I going to do? I'm going to return this piece plus whatever the index is. I'm going to return that. And maybe I can split this up a little bit just so it all fits in. plus whatever that index is. Okay, so, so let me just test this out. So I'm going to say fruit URL of zero gives me that URL. Okay, so I'm looping down here, and, um, and what I want to do is I want to figure out what the URL is. So I want to get the fruit URL um, of i, and then I'm going to get that thing. And, and so I'm going to be getting a bunch of these fruits, and, um, and there's two possibilities, right? So I'm going to say a fruit uh, if I actually got a fruit back, then what do I want to do? I want to add it. So fruits.append uh, fruit. Um, otherwise, otherwise, if I got to the end, then what do I want to do? In that case, well, I want to just return whatever fruits I have. Okay. So we have that. You, you know what? Let me head back here um, and and just add a little bit of debug information. So I'm going to say I'm going to get that URL. Okay. 
and then ultimately I want to call this thing, right? So I'm going to say grab fruits, right? So so I'm looping. It's let's try like a four i in range loop, except I don't know where the upper bound is, right? I just keep looping until I get something that says I should stop. And so it does all of those, and and cool. I was able to pull off um, a list of all those fruits to my computer, and it went really fast, right? Maybe I was overloading that server by doing so many requests in such a short period of time. Okay, so, so let's do this. So I want to head over to that fruit application now and figure out how to slow things down. Okay, so I'm going to head over to the fruit application. Let's just look at it a little bit first. I guess I have my Flask application. I have a list of fruits. Uh, let me do that. The list of fruits. Um, I have the fruit route, and then I'm getting a query string argument. And I'm either returning the empty string or I return that fruit name. And uh, so the way we could do this is, I guess, here we could, you know, have, you know, this is option one, have some kind of check. And what are we checking? Well, we're checking if we're getting too much traffic. But, but you can imagine uh, maybe later, um, I might want to have like uh, vegetables or other, other things like that, right? Maybe I want to have this checking to see if we're getting overloaded um, shared across all of these different handlers. And so a good way to do that is to add a decorator. So um, I have to write a decorator function soon, but for now let me just come up with the name of it. Maybe I'll call it uh, rate limit. Okay. And I have to be a little bit careful about the order here, right? Because this is my original function. And uh, this can swap it out with a different function. Right, and this will call whatever this returned, right? So this is the way I want it, right? Because I want the flask route uh, to call the version that I substitute in, right? If I if I swapped these two, that wouldn't be quite right. Okay, so I know that if I want this to be a decorator, well, I have to have a function called that, right? I mean, decorators are a kind of function, and uh, and decorators take a function and they return a function. Right, so so in this case, maybe I'll call a function that I, I take fn, and um, and I have to return a new function. Maybe I'll do that. I'll say something like def wrapper, and I'm going to return that wrapper. Right, so I'm going to swap out the original function uh, with this new function. Right, so so when I have this here, right, fn gets passed to here, and then I'm swapping out fruit for my wrapper function. Okay. I wonder what a good thing for my wrapper function to do would be. Um, we're trying to add functionality, so what I know is that at the core, I still want to call the underlying function, right? My wrapper that I create here is going to be calling fruit. Okay, so I have to have something like that. Um, and then there's going to be some stuff here, right? So to do here, right, I need to figure out what extra functionality I have. Uh, what is that? Well, that's like maybe return 429 if under pressure, right? So I want to figure that piece out. The other piece I have to figure out here is when I have um, decorators on top of decorators um, is the naming. Um, Flask decorators do not like to see multiple functions with the same name. And uh, what's going to happen here is when I put this rate limit, uh, fruit gets swapped out for wrapper, and, um, and Flask is going to think that all my functions are called wrapper. So I actually have to fix this a little bit. Uh, I have to rename this function. I have to say wrapper dot name uh, equals fn dot. This is one of the weirder things we have to do um, when we're making these decorators. So that's good so far. Um, you know, at this point, I think the decorator does absolutely nothing, right? You just kind of swap it out for a function that all it does is it calls the original. So maybe this is a good time to test things and make sure I haven't broken anything. So let me let me head back here. And, um, and let me restart my fruit application. And, uh, and then maybe we'll run this again. Grab fruits. Uh, still works beautifully, just like before. Okay, right. Uh, let me just show that. Great, now it's down, right, because I killed it. Okay, so this is working just as before, um, and I verified that. And so, so now I have to figure out this piece. How do I figure out when I want to return a 429? Okay, well, well, first off, let's just figure out how to, um, maybe I'll do this, I'll say something like should limit equals false, 
and then I need to figure out how to actually set that correctly. Uh, but if, if I am supposed to limit, what should I do? I should say something like, uh, if should limit, then um, I want to create a response object, right? So I'm going to create a response object here, I'm going to return response object, um, maybe I'll just say back off, uh, status equals 429, and, um, and then, then I guess I could have some headers too, which maybe I'll come back to that piece. So, so it'll be something like that. You know what, let's just make this true for now and, and just make sure that that piece is working. Can we send off this back off request? Okay, so let me head back here and run that. And now maybe I'll just open it up in the browser again. And, and oh, let me see. Uh, Control Shift J, where is that? I guess it's up here. Uh, let me go to the developer tools. And, um, and then when I refresh this, there's my request. I got a 429. And what does that mean? That means I'm getting too many requests on the back end site. Okay. So let, let's think about this now. So that's good. Uh, but how can I check this more appropriately? I mean, I should have some sort of policy. Like how often are people allowed to visit my website? And here our policy will be, will be um, one request every two seconds per IP address, right? So, so if it's like one IP address that's hitting us a bunch, uh, we don't want them to do that. Uh, but if it's a lot of different people, well, we'll allow it, right? So everybody, it's kind of fair, right? Every IP address can, you know, send a request every two seconds. And of course, that would probably usually be a lot faster, but I just want to be able to actually visually see the policy. So I, I have to somehow figure out, well, first off, what are people's IP addresses? And I, I can do that using this thing. I can say request module dot um, remote adder, right? So let me, let me just try this quick. Dot remote uh, adder. Uh, maybe I'm just going to print that, right? So this will be the client. Okay. And uh, let me run this again. So I'm running this, and uh, and I refresh this page. I head back here. Okay, so this is the client IP address. You're going to notice, right, that this is different than the server IP address, right? So this up here is the IP address of my virtual machine, and this is the IP address of my laptop when I'm visiting that, right? So, um, so this is what I want to say. I want to say that hey, this 71 point something can only have you know, one request every two seconds. So let's think about how we can do that. Um, you know what I may have to do is I may have to keep track of what time they did it, right? If I want to have something about every two seconds, I need to know when they last uh, sent me a request. Okay, so so we're going to do something like this. We're going to say, well, we have to have a dictionary here, right? So maybe I'm going to say last uh, request. And that's going to be a dictionary. And um, I always like to have these comments what the key and value are. So this will be the client IP address. And the value will be um, last time request served. Okay. That's what I want to do. And, and so how can I implement this policy? Um, I can say something like this. I can figure out when they last gave me a request, right? So maybe maybe I put this in a variable, right? So I'll call this um, client IP equals that client IP, and uh, and then like the next allowed time is going to be what? Let me let me just make the units clear in seconds since 1970. So the next loud one will be, well, when the last one came in, plus two, right? That's when they're allowed to have another request. And um, so I, that's when, you know, it's a time, right? And, and then I also need to get the current time. What is the current time? The current time is just this. This gives me the seconds uh, since 1970. Okay. Well, let me think about this. So. I think what I want to do for this should limit is I want to say if now, if we're past that allowed time, then great. Okay, it's been two seconds 
right? So now is greater than the last time we had a request plus two seconds. So two seconds have passed, and that means you're allowed to have a request. Actually, I have this backwards, right? So maybe I will change this to should allow. So if not, should allow. Okay, so I should allow it if, if it's two seconds past when we're allowed to do it. Okay, and so if that happens, then we're going to return the back off. Otherwise, um, otherwise what? Well, I, I guess I don't need an else there because this is um, after the f. Otherwise, I get to do this. I get to do the actual function. But the other thing I need to do is I need to keep track of when this last request was, right? So when were they last served? They were served at this time. Okay, right? So, so maybe we allowed them this time, but now that means that they aren't going to be allowed to for another two seconds. Um, I think this is pretty good. Um, you know the one last piece though, right, is that this dictionary starts empty. And, uh, and so I have to have some default. Maybe it's the first request we've ever seen from some IP address. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to do a get, and then I can have a default value. And let's just say um, zero, right? Let's say that the last request defaults to 1970 uh, if we haven't seen a request before. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to save this. And can we can we see all the code here? Maybe that's a little bit better, right? Okay, let me let me head back here, and I'm gonna kill this, and restart it, and let me let me try going to. Can I get apple? Great, right, there's apple. Uh, let me get banana. Um, I can refresh. I have banana, but but you see if I if I click it too fast. It's like it'll only let me do it every every two seconds. I get one request in every two seconds. And the fact that it's telling me to back off doesn't affect other users of the site. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. Oops. There we go. If I refresh this, it's allowed there. It's not. So this is good, right? So we were told to back off. Um, it will be nice to tell the, the uh, web client that it's supposed to back off for two seconds. Right? Because when I come over here, right, let's say I run this again, right? This is my web scraper. What do we get? Well, we immediately hit this, right? We get the too many web requests. It just dies, right? What I'd ultimately like to do here is, um, uh, you know, if we got that 429, I'd like to wait a while and then try again in two seconds, right? So we somehow have to communicate that out. If I, if I look back on the website and on the reading, um, it tells us how to do that, right? It tells us that we have to have this retry after. So I'm just going to copy this and, um, and then head back to my application here. And that's going to go in here, right? So I want to say something like, you know, retry after, um, you know, two seconds, right? Uh, I, I guess that's, a, that's safe, right? I mean, if they try again in two seconds, it'll work. Um, it's a little bit mean because um, maybe they've already waited a second and a half. So... Maybe what I'll do is I'll say something like this. I'll say um, next allowed minus now. That's how long they have to wait uh, before I'm going to actually service one of their requests. Okay, so, so let's try this. So I'm going um, to head over here, and I probably have to turn that into some sort of string, right? So, uh, well, we'll try it. I, I forget that if, um, if Flask will automatically convert headers to strings for you. So here I am. Great. So let's take a look at this, and beautiful, right? I, I can uh, have to wait um, a second and a half before I can do it again. So maybe let me try it really fast. And then I check this, about a second and a half. What if I kind of do it moderately paced, right? So uh, one, one and a half, and then I hit that. And then it's like, well, you only have to wait half a second. Can I even do it smaller? 0.8, okay, then can't estimate time. One, two. Great, almost two seconds, right? So then it's saying, hey, you've almost waited your two seconds. Come back in a fifth of a second, and then we'll actually serve the page. Okay, so let me let me just head back to the code here. Uh, so this is all great, right? I'm, I'm telling, uh, and I can get rid of this, of course, now. I, I have a policy, right? Each separate IP address uh, gets two requests per second. Of course, I would probably make this much, much faster. Uh, or I could have other policies. Maybe, maybe you're allowed to have two seconds back, two requests back to back. But it's something like every minute, 
you can have at most 100 requests. There's lots of different policies, um, policies I could do. Okay, so in the exercise, uh, what I'm going to have you do, and I'm just going to write a little bit of code for this now, um, I'm going to say something like if uh, r dot status code equals 429, well then I have to do something, right? So maybe I'll just print it. So we were told to back off. So let's try running this, and then running that. And, um, and so we can see we got the first fruit, and then the second fruit we were told to back off for a while. Right? So your job is going to be uh, to fix this. Right? So what you're going to have to do is uh, retry uh, once more. Right? Retry once more. Actually, and there's one other piece here. Right? So uh, wait a while, and then retry once more. Okay, so thanks. I'll head back to the document, and then I'll give you a little bit more directions there on how to do this exercise.